Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a tutorial on how to do a classic grungy smoky eye. And then I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to modify it to make it a little bit more extreme, a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more funky. So you can take and learn from this in any way, shape or form that you please. If you want to stop because it's a little bit too dramatic and too smoky, by all means do whatever it makes you comfortable. If you want to learn how to look like a sparkly, holographic alien superstar, please keep watching and I'll show you how. Okay, so we're going to get uh, started right from the get-go. My skin is already prepped. I have my serum and my moisturizer on. Um, I put on my eye primer. As always, I'm using the 24-hour Smashbox eye primer. Um, my hair is slightly wet, so we're just going to clip that back. And we're going to get started. So I'm going to take my MAC 224 brush. Um, you're going to see me constantly using this brush because it is one of my favorites and it works really well as well to do the job. And we're just going to take a Urban Decay palette for today's look. Uh, you can use any palette that you see fit, that you are comfortable using, that is in your budget, that is disposable and available to you, whatever you have lying around. I'm going to be taking the Naked Smoky palette. This palette is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. You have a really nice, beautiful range of like neutral colors and cool tone colors. And we're going to start with a nice transition. And I don't mind doing a slightly darker transition, especially for a smoky eye. If this is too dramatic and too intense for you, again, take it where you want to go, take it where you're comfortable with, and hopefully you can build it up to that smokiness that eventually you will wear out. Uh, I'm going to work, I really don't care. So I'm gonna take Password and Whiskey, this really nice charcoal and this really nice chocolate brown. I'm going to start off with Password, which is that nice gray kind of color. And a really nice, generous amount on my fluffy brush. And we're just going to throw this guy right into the crease. Little circles blending in. And then little circles blending out. You just want to alternate between the two. Just so again you get that really nice smooth, blended out, smoked out, faded out effect. Just like so. I'm going to do the other eye. And the thing about smoky eyes that's great is that you don't have to be super duper mega precise because the whole point is to be smoky and a little bit grungy and a little bit messy. Not too messy, of course, because there's a fine line in the smoky eye where it looks like you got punched and where it just looks deliberately intense and dramatic. So by using these colors little by little but more often, as opposed to more in quantity but straight from the get-go, I feel that it just pulls the look a little bit better together. So now we're going in with that whiskey that nice chocolate brown, and just literally layering it on top. And not bringing it all the way into the inner corner, but about two thirds of the way. So you can still see that this area is slightly bare. Because if you do it the whole way in, it's going to close your eye. We want to be dramatic and smoky, but not make our eyes look smaller, if that makes any sense. This is going to look ridiculous for about a while until in the end it all comes together and you're like, ah, okay, trust the process. <laughs> so just blend until your heart's desire. Blend until you think you're done blending, and then blend some more. Blend until your arm falls off. Super, just like so. Next, I'm going to be taking my shadow definer brush from Smashbox. We're going to be going in with 13, this really nice vanilla off-white kind of color. You know what we're going to do with this, we're going to place this right underneath our brow bone and just bring it down. Again, it doesn't have to be super precise. 
or clean. Just getting the general shape going on. And this I'm bringing right underneath the eyebrow, right here in the front as well. So it's going to brighten everything up and kind of bring a little bit of light and luminosity into that area. Going back with my 224, I'm just going to wipe it clean on a Kleenex just to make sure the excess product is taken off. Going in with Combust, this really nice uh, flesh tone kind of beige brown matte color. Again, nice generous amount. And we're just going to pull this upward, so right where that chocolate, uh, not chocolate, whiskey and password end, and they meet up with that 13, we're just going to pull the colors up. Just dragging them out and really, really buffing it out. So you can see already the difference that one application of Combust makes. It just really softens everything up. It blends it nicely. You still have that definition and that smokiness, but it's not a harsh line. It's a little bit more smooth of a transition. And if it became too smooth and too blended, you can always go back with that password and combust. Password and whiskey, gosh darn it. <laughs> and just add a little bit more of definition. And that's really basically what a smoky eye is. You're just constantly adding and blending adding and blending, adding and blending. So just play around with those four colors until you're happy. I can see that it's nicely diffused, but it's too soft now. So I'm just gonna go back in with that whiskey, that nice chocolate brown, and we're just going to add a little bit more here in the crease. And that's how you control your intensity, which is great. Now, I like more of a grungy, smoky eye. So if this is becoming, again, too dark and too smoky and too intense, bring it back. You're not obligated to take it as far as I do. Just do what you're comfortable with. So next, I'm going to be taking... I think I'm going to be taking Armor and Slanted these beautiful metallic colors right over here. We're gonna go with slanted just because it's a bit more of a blue undertone I find, especially because it's beside this one, which is dagger. These guys are a bit more, well, these three here are a bit more blue undertone. This is straight up silver, like gunmetal. So, I don't know, I think we're gonna go with the slanted. We'll see how this looks. Let's hope for the best. You know this step, so I'm just taking a little bit of the slanted, a little bit of the thermal water just to wet it, activate it, and I'm going to press this in a padding motion, Ooh. right on our lid. Now that our initial color has been applied, now I'm swiping it just to smooth out the edges. But you can see that that definition is still there. And now we're gonna go with the armor. So I'm not wiping my brush clean, I'm just literally putting it on top. And we're just going to apply this here on the outer corner. So you could just leave it there, just clean it up a little bit with some makeup remover or a baby wipe, uh, add a highlight on the inner corner, really important to do that step just to illuminate everything. Mascara, liner, you're good to go out the door. I'm gonna take it a step further. Again, all of my tutorials, I try to show you how you can integrate things into your routine and build them up step by step by step. So if you're not comfortable going up to step five, but you're good at step three, then take it to step three. But this is a way to show you and teach you that there's little steps that we can add that really um, 
intensify a look or change it or adjust it or shift it or whatever the case may be. So again, just take this with a grain of salt. You don't have to do this. This is pretty gosh darn smoky and any regular person would be satisfied with this. But again, I like to live edge on the dramatic lane. So we're just gonna take this black market, this really nice matte black. And I'm taking this on a back 217 this one is clean. It's not the same one that we were using to apply the shimmery shades on the lid. Because because I really want to keep it separate. I want to keep it matte black. So where all of our transition crease color work went in, and then where we have those shimmers on the lid, between those two, we're going to buff it in here, buff it into the inner corners. We're going to buff it here into the outer corner. So it just unifies everything together and adds a little bit more of uh, a consistency. So when you're content with how that blended out, again, it's a little bit ridiculous and intense, but we're gonna clean it up, it's all gonna come together. A uh, very important step that you highlight on the inner corner, like I mentioned earlier, I like to do that step after concealer because I find that if I do it now and then I wipe everything clean, it gives a really bizarre shape and it's just not as um, fluffy of an application. I don't know if that makes sense as it would be if I did it after my concealer. So again, it looks wild. It looks really bad and crazy. Believe in the process, it's gonna come together. I'm gonna take some Bioderma Sensibio Mistler Water and I'm just going to use this on a baby wipe to clean up underneath my eye. Don't have too much fallout but I just want to make sure that everything is nice and crisp and clean. So I will be back after I do my face and my eyebrows. Okie dokie, so once you're done applying your face, I actually didn't do my eyebrows yet just because I know I'm going to add some more highlights and I don't want it to cover up my brow work. So it is what it is. I don't really have a process that's like fixed. Um, sometimes I'll do face and then I'll do my eyes. Sometimes I'll do my eyes and then my face. Sometimes I'll do brows, eyes, face, brows, face, eyes. Like there's just so many different ways to achieve a look and I like to grow, I like to experiment, I like to play, I think that's the whole point and fun of makeup. So if my routine is not always consistent, um, it's because I'm as learning as much as you are. And with that being said, I'm going to take my Corrupt Urban Decay 24-7 Glide on Eye Pencil. If I'm using an eyeliner or pencil, it, it's probably going to be one from Urban Decay. But like I said, I'm obsessed with them. Um, and they're a very good quality pencil, like they are not automatic as well, you have to sharpen them. So I like that uh, there's more product in there for your money because automatic ones, as convenient as they are, um, you do have less product in there. So I'm just going to line my upper lash line. That's great, we're gonna do the lower lash line as well. And this does not have to be super precise because we are going to smoke it out. Just like so. You can see that already makes my lash line look a little bit thicker and bigger. Um, also, it's not a black, it's a really nice dark, 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 deep, deep, deep chocolate brown. And so again, for blue eyes, this works really well. But for any eye color, in fact, it works well because it's a neutral, so neutrals go with anybody. It's a very universal tone. And I'm just going to bring this into my lash line and waterline here on the bottom as well. Just like so. So you can see the difference in the eye is absolutely astronomical. So we're just going to repeat that on the other side. If you don't have the Urban Decay pencils, again, it's fine. Use what you have. Anything that's nice and creamy. That way you're not pulling and tugging on the skin, causing premature lines and wrinkles. Creamy products are a little bit easier to smudge and work with as well, which I enjoy. But not so creamy that it like travels and moves everywhere because then it just gets messy and not the good kind of messy, just like, oh fuck, my eyes are all smudged and gross and then you try to wipe it, which I don't understand because you did your concealer. And then it just smudges it more and then your concealer is all screwed up and then it's just really hard to get back from that and fix it. So just invest in a good quality texture where it gives you what you need and what you want. So once you're done, apply done applying your eyeliner, uh, it should look something like this. 
I'm going to go in now with, I think I'm gonna go in with Smolder, which is this beautiful, like deep, rich, plummy purple, but it's not a red undertone purple. It's really like a nice blue purple, but it's not super intense. Like, you know some purples when they're dark, they swatch dark and then they have that really intense shift in them, which pulls a lot of like violet and um, blue undertones. This one is just like straight up purple with a really deep undertone. I don't know if this makes any sense. Hopefully you have this palette and you know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm just going to be taking a pencil brush. This one is from MAC. It's over 10 years old. It is completely destroyed, but the actual bristle, bristles work well. So we're going to use what we have. And we're just going to take this like so, and we're just going to smudge it on top of that brown eyeliner. See how it just brings out that really nice depth to it? but it's not overtly purple. So it's gonna complement my highlight, it's gonna bring out my eye color, it's gonna add something a little bit different to the standard classic smoky eye, uh, but it is still giving us that depth and that contrast and that um, richness because it is a deep, dark color. Again, if you don't have purple, you can do this with your black, you can do this with your gun metal, you can do this with your chocolate brown. I'm just playing around and showing you how to use all of these different colors in the palette, but if you're not comfortable with this, you're more comfortable with this or this, or this, like, again, do whatever makes you happy and what you're comfortable with. So I'm just taking a little bit again on the lower lash line and just gently patting it on like that. So again, it's a little bit softer, it's a little bit smokier. And now going back with our original 217, the one that we used to apply that black eyeshadow on, I'm just gonna remove the excess black eyeshadow on a piece of paper towel, uh, just because I don't wanna make it too black and too smoky. I'm really just using this to diffuse the color. So I'm just going to lightly, softly, gently run this along my lower lash line. Going back in with that MAC 224 brush now, again I wiped it clean, there's nothing on here, I'm not taking any product on it, I'm just going to draw out our eyeshadow in an outward motion, outward and upward. So again, really to elongate that eye, to really make an almond shaped cat eye, and just connecting it with the lower lash line, so it's just really, really smoky and intense just like so. And again, you can leave it there, you can keep going. We are gonna keep going. We are gonna take that our highlight that we used on our face. Today I decided on Soft Frost from MAC. It is this absolutely stunning, um, <clears throat> opalescent, duochrome cool tone, pinky, purple, bluey, silver, fairy magic color. And I'm just gonna take this right here on my inner corner and just add a really generous amount of this. So right in the center of the inner corner, really so that it unifies the upper and lower lash line. If you wanna do like a little wiggle and do a little C, just to really make sure that everything is nicely connected and smoothed out, by all means, go ahead. And then just the tiniest amount ever on the brow bone. Just so that when you move, it catches that light and gives a little bit more depth to the look. Again, you can stop there. You can keep going. I'm feeling sassy. I had coffee. Uh, so we're going to go with Stila Glitter and Glow Magnificent Metals. This one is in Diamond Dust. These are absolutely beautiful products. They're so versatile, they're so fun and easy to use. You can cut your crease with it, you can do it as a liquid eyeliner. Um, I've already used one of these guys in my previous video, however, that one was the Shimmer and Glow. It was a liquid eyeshadow. 
So if it has a rose gold cap, it is a liquid metallic eyeshadow. If it has a gold cap, it is the original glitter eyeshadow. Um, so just be aware of the difference in those two products if you're purchasing them. And this is a stunning white gold blue reflect silver glitter. This is so pretty and versatile and just multi um, multi dimensional. And I'm just going to take the tiniest amount and I'm just going to pop it right here on the inner corner. I'm skipping the eyeliner that we did, that nice like chocolate purple eyeliner. I'm just going above it, just to the crease, and then fading it into the mobile lid. So I'm not cutting the crease. I'm just adding a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of texture, and a little bit of warmth. Again, this step is like completely over the top and ridiculous. Uh, majority of people do not work somewhere, especially on a Wednesday, <laughs> that would approve of this much makeup. But I thankfully work in cosmetics, so I can do whatever the hell I want with my face. So once you're done applying your glitter, it should look something like this. Again, you can take as little or as much. You can cut the crease. You can do a glitter liner. You can really make it thick and opaque. Mine is a little bit old. I've had it for over a year, so it's starting to get a little bit on the dry side. Also, I do use it, so it's a little bit running out. But I do like that little texture. I like that little uh, brightness. I like that effect that's giving me with that purple highlight, with all the matte shades in the crease. It's just a lot of dimension, and I'm really living for this look. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to apply my eyelashes, my mascara, and my eyebrows, and I will come back to show you the finished look, and we'll do lips together. So guys, this is the final finished look for lips today. I went with the Aisha Everlasting Liquid Lipstick from Kat Von D. It is this really pretty, cool tone purple. It's not flashy violet, and it's not a berry tone. It really is like a dark gray purple, which I really, really enjoy. And then just to balance out the eyes, since we have some matte shades in the transition uh, crease, but we also have some texture with that highlight on the inner corner and glitter, I decided to do a lip topper. This was a limited edition product from Quo. It was in a pre-pack, so it's not permanent, unfortunately. There's not even a shade name on it. It just looks like this. So any holographic lip topper that you have or any holographic lip gloss that you have, just apply it on your matte lipstick and it'll give it that really nice shift and sheen. And yeah, that's about it for today's look. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something interesting today. Please let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the style of video, uh, if the lighting setup is a little bit better, if you enjoy the background more. Just give me a constructive but nice criticism. Uh, much appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next video. Bye guys.